From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Well, 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 here we are with another Open Mic Show. I'm your host, Tim Coco, and with me in the studio is Haverhill's second highest vote getter, Tom Sullivan. Uh, going to be, I'm assuming it's tradition and it'll happen, going to be the uh, city council vice president come January. Does that sound right, Tom? Uh, it sounds like it should be right, yes. <laughs> Was there any reason your colleagues wouldn't do it? <laughs> Not that I'm aware of, so all we're right. going to be all set there. All right. So, Tom, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. Your reason for being here, of course, is that we're going to discuss something really fabulous that's happening this sa Sunday or Saturday. What day is this? It's Sunday. 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 <laughs> November 19th, 1 p.m., Route 125, Brad Bidet. It's the 53rd annual VFW Santa Parade. All right. Are we getting that? I, I'm, I'm for some reason having okay, folks. This is what live radio is all about. I'm um, tell you what, bring bring that mic over just in case that does that sound live? Yeah. All right, for some someone has disconnected one of our microphones, so let's try. All right, so <laughs> let's try again. All right, so are you hearing him through that microphone? Testing one, two, three. All right, so all let's right. try, let's try that. Now, Tom. Testing, testing. See, folks, how we do live radio? That's ah. because the studio hadn't been in use for uh, a weekend, and things get changed by people who work weekends in here. So that, uh, that's what happens. But anyway, it is such a delight to have you on the Open Mic Show again. And as uh, our listeners who are familiar with you and your story... Uh, you're not the head of the parade committee, but frankly, in most people's minds, and no offense to all the wonderful volunteers and the chairman you have, um, but your father was such an integral part of starting the Santa Parade that it seems fitting that you're here. Well, thank you. Um, it, it's an honor to be here, and no, I am not the chairman of the Santa Parade. I was the chairman for 15 years back when my father passed away in 1985. I took over until 2001. Uh, but since that time I've stayed with the committee. We've had a series of chairpersons since then, from Joan Cranton to Roland Plourd, and now Dan Plourd Sr. is the chair. And I just want to ask, I don't want to leave Dan Plourd out of this, of course. Uh, he was unable to join us, but Dan has been instrumental. He's, he's kind of put his own uh, face on this, in a way, hasn't he? He's been very, very helpful. Can you, can you tell us what his role is, and, and frankly, that takes all year long to get to this stage, doesn't it? Right. So the, the chairman's role, the chairperson's role, is to make sure that the uh, entire event uh, starts and finishes from the planning stages to the implementation phases uh, smoothly, and, uh, and, and, it, and that it comes off on budget and on time. So uh, it, it's a full-time job, meaning that once the parade is over this weekend, uh, we'll get together for a, uh, two more occasions. We'll pay all the bills to the bands, marching bands and other bills. Uh, and then you have about three months off, and come April, you start all over again to uh, prepare for the following event. It's the largest uh, annual uh, event in the city of Haverhill, and it's the largest uh, holiday parade uh, north of Boston, actually. So it, it's quite an event. It, it takes a lot of planning. And he does a great job. Hey, that's um Let's recap it, and then I want to go back into some history. So it's the 53rd annual, 53rd, wow, incredible, yeah. uh, that starts this Sunday, 1 o'clock, down Route 125 from the Bradford Fire Station all the way to the former VFW Post 29 at 64 Canosa Avenue. So the route hasn't changed. No, the route will be the same. Tell us about the theme this year. So the theme this year is It's Christmas Time in the City, and that theme was chosen by uh, members of the Parade Committee by a majority vote this year. We decided to do that in that fashion, and um, it, it gives us a chance to reflect on the city of Haverhill, what it, what it was when we were kids and our, our parents were children, and what it's become today, um, which is a lot different Haverhill than the city that we grew up in. Uh, it's better in many ways, um, and we're challenged in other ways, but it gives everybody a chance to expound on a theme that they can do anything they want with. They can either make it relative to Haverhill itself or any city. 
And they could also tie it into Silver, uh, silver Bells, the Christmas song, because that is part of the lyrics of, of that song. So it, we thought it would be a good theme and a, and a nice theme for this year. All right. And then um, always so many wonderful people have helped the VFW Santa Parade over the years. But this yeah. year you're singling out someone uh, to be memorialized. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, this year the parade is dedicated to longtime Santa Parade committee member Michael V. Lyons. Mike Lyons, a Bradford resident, great guy, lives on the parade route, family watch the parade every year. He got involved a few years back, uh, quite a few years back, and he just became an instrumental player in the organizing and particularly the fundraising for the parade. Uh, don't forget, the parade costs us about $40,000 a year. People ask, where does that money go? Well, the bulk of it goes to the marching bands that come to the parade. Marching bands do not perform for free. Uh, they do charge uh, thousands of dollars, and, and we get some of the best marching bands uh, across the state, really, and, 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 and we're very proud of the band that participate in that parade, they really make a difference. Uh, having said that, Mike would raise a lot of the money. He would, he would go out and pound the pavement. He was a salesman by trade, uh, and he just knew how to, uh, how to be a successful salesman in all, in all facets. So we miss him. We miss him dearly. He passed away last spring. Um, uh, his loss was felt and, and is felt by all of us. And we thought it would be nice and appropriate to dedicate the parade to him this year, which we have done. Now, I, I, I knew Mike many years ago, uh, way back during the 1980s. He was a bit of a, a, an activist of sorts, yes, uh, going before city council, very, very concerned about environmental issues and neighborhood issues. I think he, uh, he won the respect of, of almost everyone uh, over the decades, whether it was on the city council or other city boards. So it seems, it seems fitting and appropriate and thank you he really uh, to did. your committee you know, he really did the, the, before he passed uh, Mike was also instrumental in the hunking school uh, project and uh, even uh, the superintendent superintendent Scully gave him a lot of credit because uh, he was such a, a strong proponent of the new hunking school now as I as I told listeners we would do this um, as I told listeners we would do this and I know it's almost a tradition. It's almost like watching It's a Wonderful Life on television. But let's hear the story about how your father uh, brought out the parade, what what the circumstances were. There were some other events that were canceled. And, and Yeah, well, if you go back to, you set the clock back to 1964, the Greater Haverhill Chamber of Commerce, <coughs> which at the time was probably just the Haverhill Chamber of Commerce, uh, known as, they had sponsored an annual parade. But 1963 was the last year that they decided they were doing it. So my father uh, and other veterans, and he didn't do this alone, and many, many great names uh, come to mind when I think about who started this parade. Uh, he was the leader of the pack, though, there's no doubt about that. Um, they had formed a drum corps, a drum and bugle corps, which were very popular back in the early 60s and would be popular for the next 20, 30 years. Um, and he had formed one, and they were going to different uh, cities and towns and playing in different parades. So when the Chamber of Commerce decided they were no longer going to sponsor the event and organize the event, he decided the VFW would do it, and, and quickly everyone jumped on board. And that is how the VFW Santa Parade was started and created. And back in the early days, when it was a smaller parade, uh, my father would barter with other drum corps to uh, trade uh, parades, to go to each other's events, and, and there really wasn't a lot of uh, pay back then. You didn't have to pay the marching bands. That all changed and has changed greatly. Like I said, the marching bands now are the bulk of our budget every year. All right, well, it is certainly a, a good story, and it, it deserves to be retold uh, each, each year. And we're really grateful uh, that there are so many people who have uh, picked up the torch to keep this thing going. Can you tell us about, uh, and I have your notes if you need them, uh, what we might expect to see in this year's parade? Sure, sure. Um, Sunday we will have uh, at least 14 marching bands and musical units. Uh, coming back for uh, many years now, Londonderry High School, Londonderry Lancers Marching Band, over 200 members have won awards nationally and participated in some very prestigious parades, whether it was been down in Disney or uh, the Rose Bowl, I believe they've been to uh, a great band. And, uh, and along with that, we have Salem, New Hampshire Marching Band coming, another uh, prestigious band that's been around and won awards. Uh, we're happy to have them. We have Reading Memorial coming. Reading Memorial is another award winner. 
Uh, Beverly's coming. Beverly High School is returning. The Immaculate Heart of Mary. Uh, there's no shortage of great bands. We also have our local bands that we love. Uh, the Sons of Italy Drum and Bugle Corps will be leading in Santa as they have past the uh, past few years. And the Haverhill High School Middle School Band will be uh, joining us. And every year they get a little bit stronger. I want to give a shout out for the uh, Haverhill High School Band parents and the Band Association. They're currently undergoing a fundraiser to try to raise money for band uniforms. And I, for one, think band uniforms are critical. And actually, as a city councilor, I'm going to be advocating for money in the budget to try to bring uh, some funds to uh, get some band uniforms back. It's the next logical step. Um, we want our band. We want to be. We want our band to shine on parade day, and it's time we brought that back. Our our band has been lacking. Everyone knows that. We ha had some tough times, and the band budget took a hit early on in the lean years. But but it is coming back, and there are a lot of people working hard, and I just want to give them a, uh, my support, and I will be um, helping them out. And I told them that already. Well, thank you, Tom. Can you just stay with us? And I know we've got some calls backing up, but some may be related to the parade. So what I'm going to do is ask Chris, we're going to take our, um, our, our mid-half-hour break right now, and then we'll be back with Tom Sullivan here on the Open Mic Show discussing the VFW Santa Parade, 53rd Annual, coming up Sunday. We'll be right back. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. WHAV is on Facebook. For quick access, visit whav.net and click on the Facebook icon. Catch the wave! On air or online, 97.9 WHAV serves you. Twice an hour weekdays, keep up to date with exclusive local news. Find out about civic events on Community Spotlight every quarter hour. And better prepare with wave weather every 30 minutes. For talk, there's Open Mic Show, Monday nights. In your hometown, Friday nights. Mass Moments, Melinda's Garden Moment, Sound Beat, and Insight Daily complete the spectrum. Hear classic comedy and drama seven nights a week at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. Finally, a unique blend of rock and roll hits round out the entertainment. Stay with 97.9 WHAV, the only Haverhill-based news source. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. And welcome back to the Open Mic Show. I'm your host, Tim Coco. Joining me is Haverhill City Councilor, Tom Sullivan, or do you want to be Thomas J. now that you're vice president of the council, or soon will be? I'm still Tom <laughs> Sullivan. I'll always be Tom Sullivan. We went to high school together, folks, so that's why we're a little more casual. Class uh, of 79. Super fine 79. There you go. And our class president was who? John J. Guerin, Jr. See, well, see we're uh, prominent members of uh, society, uh, despite what everyone thought we, how we would turn out. We turned out okay. <laughs> a lot of leaders a lot of leaders came out of the class of 79. That's okay. That's uh, a good I'll thing. I'll tell you what, if you'd, uh, if you'll work with us, we have on the line the person who usually kicks off our birthday calls. Uh, we have um, Brian, right? Is he's on my end or your end? My end. All right, so Brian, you are on the open mic show with City Council with Tom Sullivan. Can you hear me, Tess? Yes, we Tess. can. This is my cell phone instead of my landline. Hi, Tim. Hi, Tom. I hey, have to Brian. tell you, it sounds a lot better, doesn't it, Chris? Yeah, I have to say we like that, but I also will tell you that we also did some repairs to our systems, so who knows which one was the most effective. <laughs> well, I'll be testing that out sometime. 
All right, so you have a birthday entrant? I do. All right. I do. And that is Mark. Mark. Okay, happy birthday, you know Mark. Mark. Is this the Mark that uh, helps with music? Yes, it is. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Happy no, birthday. I used to call in my friend Nick, but Nick passed away last month. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, and I don't know. I, I, I still can't believe it. Oh, that's right. That's right. They were talking about Nick Katsaris. Is that right? Right. Yeah, what a tragedy. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Mark is a great choice. Mark, is, as he may have told you, has been helping out behind the scenes here. And um, Mark is very, uh, well, I'm going to say very picky for one thing, but that's a good thing. <laughs> but he can discern whether a recording from 1955 is exactly right, whether a better version exists, whether a stereo version exists. And he's really done a great job helping us that's with our amazing. music library. That is something. Now let me tell that you that this. Kind of dedication. <laughs> let me t let me tell you this because this might change uh, what you're doing. This uh, is probably the last show of the open mic for uh, a few weeks because we're gearing up. We're going to be rebuilding this studio and we're going to have a new host uh, for the open mic show. Someone you're all familiar with who's had who has done the show before. So uh -huh. if you have a, we're going to actually pick the birthday winner tonight for December. So if you, you have haven't a, done November yet, what's that? You haven't done November yet. <laughs> did, did we announce November? November is not picked. Uh, Chris, Chris, can you bring me the hat? Uh, Tom Sullivan's just going to have to do all the work tonight. Hey, I'm, <coughs> I'm taking over the show. I better get used to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, no, the, he's trying to throw you there. Yes, okay. We're gonna, I know. We're, we're gonna throw. Okay, we're gonna throw. <laughs> we're gonna do the October winner, Brian. The what November would November. We, November. Yeah, November. we're gonna do the November winner that we received in October. What but this is, is getting too confusing. This is why I have to do this. What so, day is it, Tim? What day do you think? Uh, all is? right. So, uh, Tom Sullivan, on behalf of the VFW Santa Parade, is going to pick the winner of the All BD Second Generation Italian Bakery Cake Contest for November. All okay. right, who do we have? No shoemakers. All right, let's see who we got. Do I get to announce it? Uh, just the first name. Christine. Christine is the winner. Christine is the winner. Christine, Christine. of Salem, New Hampshire. She's mine. She's yours. See, see, you know what you do is you have to become friends with Brian because he's got some special luck here. All right, so Christine is the winner, and we've now done the. Now we've done the. November birthdays, and we're going to pick at 8.15 the December birthday. So, uh, Brian, here's your last chance. Do you have anyone else you want to nominate for a December birthday? No, that's all I can think of. All right. Well, Brian, you were so helpful. You're going to take over the show. <laughs> that's the secret. Well, <laughs> I continue to call in, because I don't know what we could do to modify that equipment to do what I used to do back in the 70s at the old WRAZ radio. Brian, you'd be expensive, but you'd be worth it. It would be worth every penny. Tim told me that earlier, so you're all set. <laughs> yeah, we okay. have to bring in some reel-to-reels and some razor blades, because that's how we used to edit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's how we did it. That's how we did it before digital. The old Revox. Chris wishes we still did it that way. That's right, we had those Revox, or what? Is that how you say it? Revox machines? Well, some say Revox, some say Revox. Doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. See, uh, see, Brian, you really do have a good memory of that. I'd almost forgotten that we had those. I have a one. killer memory. I guess, you, <laughs> I, I guess you do. All right, well, Brian... I remember the shoemakers. I remember, I remember standing next to you at oh. the VFW. Yep. Oh, all right. Brian and I spent a lot I of... I miss the VFW. I don't have a, a watering hole. I know. Well, you're saving a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll work that out. So, Brian, very much. Thank you very much for uh, one the reminders and for two for participating in the Albedee's Second Generation Italian Bakery Cake Contest. One forty South Main Street in Bradford. Oh, we're going to save that. We're going to record that. Chris may save that recording. Uh, it's going to be the new tagline read by our own Brian. Okay, thank there you very you much. Okay, gentlemen, have a good evening. You All too. Right, take care. Thank you. Yeah, bye. All right, now we're going to, uh, we have, I think, Safety Officer Dave on the line. And um, maybe Dave will, will come on right now. Maybe he has a question for Tom Sullivan of the VFW Parade Committee. S 
Safety Officer Dave, you're on the air. Yeah, hey, how you doing, Tim? Nice talking to you, and I uh, appreciate what you're doing for Haverhill and Mr. Sullivan there. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, I used to work for the Lagasse Amusement Company, and I used to put up the lights down in town. Wow. And the bell and all that stuff. Whatever happened to the bell? They put one here last year. Now they don't want them. They, they should be disgracing themselves because they're not doing the Christmas thing that they used to do. They used to put up all the decorations and then have the parade. What happened there? Well, well, you're still doing the VFW Santa Parade. Right. So. 53 years later, we're still doing the Santa Parade for you. Right. And I understand that. But hey, Rue is not decorated like other towns. If you go to Lawrence, they're decorated better than we are. What's up with that? Well, I think when a lot of the buildings got taken down and reconfigured, it got more difficult to do the traditional type of decorations. I understand that, but I mean, we have telephone poles they can put stuff on, and... Uh, I hear the static in the background. Okay, yeah. And they can decorate the GAR Park up real nice. What's the matter with that? That'd be awesome. I like Gale Park. They do a great job up at Gale Park. Yeah, actually, Safety Officer Dave, have you seen Gale Park? Uh, yeah, I have, yeah. I mean, they've really redone it this year. Uh, Joe yeah, Cranton they've done and the a lot neighbors. Of good here in the city of Haverhill. But uh, um, I'm, I'm known as a safety advisor here through Tim Coco and. Uh, I, I think they the should do, I'd like to talk a little bit about safety, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, you know, it, yeah, you have these crosswalks and these things in the road that they, they have no sign there. They, uh, before them, they should say pedestrian crossing and let the people know and the cars know that the people are crossing there. Uh, this, we just had a little boy get hit over here on River Street, and he's not doing good at all. Yeah, but he wasn't on a crosswalk, and I do feel bad about that. <laughs> that should have never happened. That that should have never happened. I know, but, I mean, if they have signs up to beware of pedestrians a little further than where the crosswalk is, it might prepare the car driver a little better to slow down and prepare for, you know, the worst or well, whatever. I agree with you, and I think people need to slow down in general, and they need to pay attention to what they're doing when they're driving because there's way too many distractions these days. So, like I say, I mean, we'll get back to the parade a little bit here. You're doing a good job, and Haverhill Parade is like the Macy Parade, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the Macy Day Parade. So, you, you know, you're doing a real good job, and I appreciate that. And uh, Thank you, Dave. You know, keep up the good work and try to see. See if you can decorate the city more. Put Santa Claus in the GAR park. How about, how about the igloo? Let's get the igloo back. Remember when there the was an igloo? The igloo was destroyed by a salvage yard, so it wasn't the Christmas lights and the bell. Yeah. Which salvage yard was that? I think it was Lawrence. I'm not sure. We're, um, oh, <laughs> I can't. Uh, brothers. They, there were some brothers that owned it out there. Who made that decision, Dave? Uh, I have no idea, oh, but come on. Uh, it, it was destroyed. Uh, I I understand that the lights and everything get all crushed. Oh, really? That's a shame. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the bell was a success in Haverhill. Put one in the park. Hey, what's the difference, Maybe right? we could put one at Harbor Place. We could put it on <laughs> the boardwalk. Yeah, put one at Harbor Place. <laughs> put, put one, in the, one in the park and gather a big crowd over there to come see Santa and have a niggle, you know, and the kids here. It'd be a nice time. Well, I hope everyone comes out and sees Santa this Sunday at 1 o'clock along Route 125 at the parade. This is the 53rd yeah, you annual. You've got to liven up this city. This city is... Oh, it'll be alive on know, Sunday. Everything's too quiet. <laughs> Won't be on Sunday. All right. yeah, okay, Merry Christmas to you and Happy Thanksgiving. You as well, Tim Coco. Well, thank you very thank much, you. Safety Officer Dave. I look forward to talking with you again. Same thank you. Okay, so much. have a good Thanks. Christmas. Bye yes, now. Thank you. Uh, you know, Safety Officer Dave always has some excellent suggestions. Yes, he does. Uh, he has identified issues at Pug Pond, at the at the stadium, other things, and because of, of him working on those issues, they get attention, and and good people of uh, like City Councilor Sullivan, uh, Public Safety, uh, I'm going to call him Public Safety Councilor Michael McGonagall, others yep. uh, address these issues. But let's uh, let's just let's spend a little more time on. The Santa Parade, because this is so important. We want to make sure we get the word out. So let's recap. You just said 53rd annual, 1 o'clock Sunday. But come on, every year you're looking for some extra donations. And you, frankly, you're starting next year's parade Sunday. So Correct. how can people help you? 
Uh, right now, it's it's still uh, there's still time to participate in the parade. If any marching group, uh, neighborhood association, or organization wants to uh, put a banner in front and march in the parade, we're still accepting them. If anybody has a last minute float, they can get into the parade as uh, as, as far as Thursday. Thursday's the cutoff this week. Thursday will be the deadline for late entrance into the parade. That's still that is late, isn't it? It is, but you know, it, it we we are that organized that we can take more because we have three different locations to stage this event from. So everything's down to a science. We know what we can hold, and we do have room for a little more if, we, if, if they're out there and they want to be part of this great event. What about making a contribution? And we're always looking for contributions, and we now have a website. A lot of this is done uh, through the website and through PayPal, uh, www.vfwsantaparade.com. Uh, you can also contact the Santa Parade at 978-373-3777. That's 978-373-3777. We'll steal that number from you. That's a great it's number. It's a great number. I got that number <laughs> for us back in 1985, in fact, when we, we took on our own phone. I, I will add that the Santa Parade is, is, is a alive and well. Uh, it's going to be a great event. Uh, we will be ending in front of the Lorraine Post 29 building, which uh, has not sold just yet. And um, But we will end at, at, at the parade. It will end at the uh, traditional point, and we will uh, make sure that there's plenty of parade personnel there to make sure that the bands and the floats and the participants uh, continue down the road and disband in an orderly fashion. We've already met with the police department, as the chairman does every year with the police, to coordinate the day's efforts. So it should be a great time. Uh, well, hoping for the best. Uh, in terms of the weather, it's the only thing that we can't control, actually. We we have a handle on everything but that. All right. Uh, I know that you've got, actually got to go to a VFW Santa Parade meeting right, right. now, but can you stay for one call? Sure. All right. Well, it's a birthday call. Well, I'm sure he likes birthdays. I, I, I had one, but <laughs> I have, have another one. <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, okay, you're on, you're on the open mic show. Hi, how are you? Very good. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I was calling in. I called and spoke to, I think it was Mark, and I told him I had four birthdays for the month of December. All right. Want me to name them all off again? Yeah, uh, just just the first names. All right, Amy. Amy? Amy, yeah. Christopher. Christopher. Irene. Eileen. And Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Well, wow, four birthdays. They're all going to go into the hat. Yep, uh, and, and they're all the same family. All the same family, my goodness. Yep. I wonder how they timed that. I uh, know. <laughs> so, <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, that's wonderful. And so they, are they all in Haverhill or, or where? Uh, in Groveland. In Groveland, nearby. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. All right, so we're going to draw the winner in about an hour and 15 minutes for yep. December. Oh, uh, thank you. And then that way we can get that out of the way. And then we're going to take our, our holiday break here on the Open Mic Show. Of course, HAV is on the air 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that yep. won't change. But Open Mic. I mics. listen to it all the time. Oh, isn't that wonderful? I hear all of you. I hear when, um, not Wendy, I forgot her name, um, the other lady. I hear, I hear everybody on, Ga uh, is it Gary, I think? Okay, well, we have... Oh, yeah. or something? Oh, well, there's Robin, there's Mark. Robin, that's it. Now we're doing the community spotlight. She does a wonderful job. Yeah, I hear her, and I hear all these other shows and names and the rock and roll one, and I listen to all of them. Well, don't forget Jay's Photography Studio taking those great pictures for you for your whav.net newsline. Yeah, actually, yeah. have you checked the... Uh, have, do you ever look at our website, whav.net? I don't have a computer. Oh, okay, that's fine. But I can always ask somebody. I'll put, that's what I'm going to do next. It's an excellent way to get your daily news, I'll tell you. It's a great that alternative. That would be nice. Well, yeah. you can listen on air, but if you ever want to go in and see pictures, you'll see this radio with pictures. I think that's called television. We only do oh. that on Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> but because I listen to the news and um, every day, and I listen to the Havel News, and I really enjoy it. Well, thank you very much. What a wonderful call. Uh, thank you. <laughs> we'll make sure you get a special reward. We appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much, and I enjoy your shows and everything. Well, thank you very much. What a wonderful delight to have you on the program. We, uh, hopefully you stay with us, and we'll... we'll I will. I'm, I've been on for a long time. I've been calling, or I listen, I listen faithfully. Thank you for calling. And my calling. family listens, too. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much, and we'll look forward to, uh, to catching up with you when uh, the show comes back from its vacation. I, I hope it's soon, because I'll miss it. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. Isn't that nice of you? Thank you so much. Thank you very uh, much. All right. Good bye -bye. night, then. You have a great evening. You, too. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.
All right. Well, Tom, that just about wraps up our time. One last call for action here for Santa Parade. Well, everybody get ready. The, the holiday kickoff uh, takes place Sunday, this Sunday, November 19th, 1 o'clock, the VFW Santa Parade, and it's 53rd annual. The theme is It's Christmas Time in the City, and it will roll down Route 125 Bradford to Haverhill. It starts at the uh, Hunking School fire station area, and it ends in front of the Lorraine Post 29 VFW Post at 64 Canoser Avenue. Thank, Thank you, for you me. very much, Tom. For, you know, and uh, you know, most of you know me by now. When did Tom get the call to come on the show? Yes, today. That's uh, that's how organized we two, are. Two uh, two hours ago. <laughs> but because uh, we realized that, my goodness, half the month is gone already. It's hard to believe. But anyway, folks, we're going to take a break for local news. You're going to hear Eric Scott deliver the local news. He's a voice that was heard on HAV many years ago. Now rejoining us uh, as a, a news anchor, and then after that. We're we're going to hear from a pretty foxy lady from England, and we'll explain after the news. We'll be back with more of the Open Mic Show. Thank you, Tom Sullivan, for joining us. It's 701. WHAV LP Haverhill. Here's what's happening in local news. Haverhill property owners will find out Tuesday night whether or how much their taxes will increase during the coming year. City councilors will debate tax classification for residential and commercial properties at their annual hearing on the subject. The council meets at 7 p.m. in the Theodore A. Pelosi City Council Chambers on the second floor of Haverhill City Hall. The meeting is open to the public. Before councillors decide how they will split the tax burden, Mayor James J. Fiorentini will let councillors know how he plans to use nearly $11 million in free cash. At the council's last meeting, the mayor indicated he's leaning toward using about a million dollars to reduce an anticipated tax increase and direct between four and six million towards the one hundred eighty five point seven million needed to run the city this year. Currently, residential property owners pay fourteen ninety nine per thousand dollars of assessed valuation, meaning the owner of a three hundred thousand dollar home pays about forty five hundred a year in taxes. The owner of commercial property pays twenty six forty three per thousand dollars of value. The city arrived at these tax rates after last year's tax classification hearing in which councillors shifted the commercial property tax burden higher by the smallest amount possible, which raised the average business tax bill by $9 a year. The average residential tax bill went up by $138. If you travel I-95 near Newbury, be prepared for detours and lane closures today. The Massachusetts DOT plans to temporarily close the on- and off-ramps to and from I-95 at exit 56 Scotland Road. The closures are required to allow pavement resurfacing. Closures will begin at 9 a.m. and continue through 3.30 p.m. Work begins in the morning with the Scotland Road ramps to and from I-95 northbound closed. Southbound ramps will be closed in the afternoon. Morning northbound traffic will be detoured to exit 57 Story Avenue, Newburyport, to reverse direction onto I-95 south and then back to Scotland Road. Those driving along Scotland Road seeking northbound highway access will be detoured to the on-ramp to I-95 southbound and then directed to exit 55 Central Street to reverse direction. Afternoon traffic on I-95 south will be detoured to Central Street to reverse direction. Scotland Road traffic seeking to access the on-ramp southbound will be detoured to the on-ramp to I-95 north and then directed to Story Avenue to reverse direction. There'll also be lane closures on sections of Scotland Road east and west. The state Senate late last week passed health care reform legislation aimed at cutting costs and helping community hospitals. It also included amendments designed to help seniors and adults with disabilities and force the state to consider adopting single-payer health insurance. Senators passed the bill 33 to 6. Senator Barbara Latalian said she sponsored several amendments that allow senior residents receiving mass health benefits to choose assisted living homes, allow people with disabilities over age 26 to continue receiving insurance from their parents, and expands access to the Medicare savings programs to reduce costs for low-income seniors on Medicare. Despite uncertainty and recklessness at the federal level, Massachusetts continues to show it will do what it takes to take care of its residents, Latalian said. Our government should be judged by how we treat our most vulnerable citizens, she added. 51 of the 162 amendments survived the final vote after two days of debate. The bill now moves to the House. 
The bill also requires the state to compare its current spending with a single-payer health care system similar to Medicare but available to everyone. If single-payer proves to be less expensive, officials would have to develop a plan to put that model into place, Latalian said. Methuen police are asking for the public's help in identifying two men who broke into a Lowell Street convenience store early Friday morning. Police released portions of surveillance video Saturday showing two hooded men breaking into the 611 Variety Store at 466 Lowell Street about 3.15 a.m. Friday. After breaking into the store, the men fished through drawers and cabinets and may have fled in a light blue Jeep Cherokee with a Massachusetts dealer plate. Anyone with information is asked to call Methuen Police at 978-983-8698. Photographs and video are available at whav.net. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source. There's always more at whav.net. From the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Eric Scott. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Priscilla Huff. More than 400 are dead and 7,000 injured after an earthquake of more than 7.2 magnitude hit the Iran-Iraq border. The chief of Zimbabwe's army says he might be forced to step in if the political purges continue, but he didn't accuse President Robert Mugabe of anything specific. A soldier is now in hospital after being shot by his own military while defecting from North Korea to South Korea. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Bess with Wave Weather. Any showers or wet snow showers ending during tonight, it'll become partly to mostly cloudy. Low to mid-30s by morning. Mostly cloudy and about 45 on Tuesday, near 32 at night. And Wednesday, developing sun well up in the 40s. This is meteorologist Gary Best. Your next wave weather is coming up in 30 minutes. This spot could have been yours. Support WHAV's local approach with your underwriting. Go to WHAV.net and click on advertising to reach thousands of new customers. WHAV, Merrimack Valley, open mic. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. And welcome back to the Open Mic Show. Now, there's a, a funny little story here. I don't know if David Godswood is, is listening, and perhaps he'll chime in later, but no obligation to do so. But uh, David Godswood actually has a funny way of describing this. He, uh, he met a woman on the Internet who turned out to be a fox. Um, we'll explain that. Uh, Chris, can you show the fox when you have a chance on, uh, for our TV viewers? Now, David Goudswood, as you uh, may well know, is the WHAV's historian, and he writes many of those wonderful Haverhill Heritage Series articles uh, that we only briefly talk about on air, but appear at whav.net. And David is working on an article, He's, he kind of, one has already appeared, about Haverhill, but not necessarily Haverhill, Massachusetts. The, the Haverhill that started it all is Haverhill, Suffolk, England. And there we have Mavis Mays. Mavis Mays uh, came here. Unfortunately, it wasn't time to, to be live. So we recorded an interview with Mavis Mays, who's going to tell some of the story about uh, the fox of Haverhill, England. And if Chris is ready with that audio, uh, we're going we're gonna to kind of run a little bit past our break, and then we're going to come back. But uh, Chris will have, uh, uh, have Mavis Mays from Haverhill, Suffolk, England on, and then we can all talk about it when we come back. And be ready with your birthday calls. We're still taking birthdays for December, and we're actually going to do the drawing tonight. So go through those, uh, those address books, those black books and other things, and get everybody ready for the Albedee's Second Generation Italian Bakery Cake Contest. But right now, let's go with the interview with Mavis Mays from Suffolk, 
Haverhill, Suffolk, England. We are here with Mavis May. Now that name won't sound that's very Mavis familiar. That's Mavis Mays. That's that's got an S on the end. Oh, it's got an S on that's the end. That's lots of May. <laughs> well, now. Uh, those of you in the radio audience might have will make a comparison to uh, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Edgar Bergen was a famous radio uh, show host whose uh, sidekick was a uh, wooden ventriloquist dummy. So apparently, it's not uncommon for radio uh, to have some uh, some very visual images. Maybe this is a rather attractive fox. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I dare say I am, yes, really. <laughs> yeah. The reason she's here is that uh, David Goudswood, uh, you know, the open mic show historian, uh, is working on a, um, a review of the other Haverhills other than Haverhill, Massachusetts. And, of course, the beginning Haverhill is Haverhill, Suffolk, where, of course, our Haverhill comes from. And I wonder if Mavis can tell us something about whether there is a certain pride in Haverhill, Suffolk, that there are so many other descendant Haverhills, uh, especially in the United States, and of course one of the older ones being Haverhill, Massachusetts. That's right. Well, I didn't know there was more than one, because I come from the one back, back in England, and someone told me there was one in Mass... Mass how do you say it? Massas... Massachusetts so I said well I don't really like to go very far in the world but if there was anywhere I'd like to go that'd be Haverhill Massachusetts so that'd be almost the same but a little bit different and I've got to say that's a lot bigger in Haverhill and in Suffolk back where I'm from there's all sorts of places like ta taco places and do nuts and I, I never have any of them. I would like to try some of that stuff. Yeah. Well, actually, we have a, 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 a maybe unfortunate reputation for having a donut shop on almost every corner of every block. Well, uh. <laughs> a block. And you know what? The, the biggest thing about Haverhill, Massachusetts, is that's got a rail station. Now, I don't know if you have seen me and my friend Phyllis. Phyllis is back there. <laughs> She don't want to say nothing. She do all the filming for me, but she don't understand a word that American people are saying. She say they all mumble and she can't understand it. That's right, isn't it, fellas? <coughs> That's right, yeah. But there was a rail station, and I'm ever so jealous because there used to be a train station in Haverhill, Suffolk, and then they took it all away. They and took you, it away? Why you is that? You can see my YouTube video all about the lost railway of Haverhill. And they took it away in the 1950s because they thought that we didn't need them no more. So no one can go nowhere now. It's, it's ever so weird. Well, so Mavis, yeah. your accent, now of course those, our listeners probably won't be able to distinguish it, but your accent is somewhat different than your friend. Why is That's that? Right. Well, I have a West Suffolk accent and um, not many people have this no more it's a dying dialect yep because most of the older generation will have it but then what happened when the train took was taken away all the londoners came up from london and mingled with the suffolk people so then their little ones and their children don't have the accent as a as a hybrid if you like so it's a mixture of london and suffolk and the true suffolk people are silly old buggers like me yeah well, now, how, how long has your family been in Suffolk? Oh, don't you see us, dear. I, I don't even know. I go way back. They've always been around in Suffolk, yeah. We wouldn't want to be nowhere else. <laughs> you go back to the Norman Conquest, you think? Oh, I'm sh I dare say they do, dear. <laughs> I, I bet Phyllis go back to the Norman Conquest, don't you, Phyllis? <laughs> now, how, how big is Haverhill, Suffolk? Well, I believe that's about, got a population of about 21,000. So that's probably, a des I dare say that's smaller than Haverhill, Massachusetts. Is that right? That's true. So it's yeah. amazing the descendants have grown. That's right, yeah. They spread out. And that Nathaniel Ward fella, he, he come from Haverhill, Suffolk. And he, his brother, I believe that's his brother, Samuel Ward. He have a school, that, there's a school called Samuel Ward in Haverhill, Suffolk. And you have a ward 
something. A Ward Hill, that's named after Nathaniel Ward. So there was brothers from each of the Haverhills. Oh, so you, you've uh, made some connections and yeah. associated them. And so is, uh, is the Ward name uh, still prominent in Haverhill Suffolk? Oh, ever so much, yeah. There's Samuel Ward Academy. That's a very nice high school back, back in Haverhill. I know a lot of people that went there. So the, uh, the descendants who uh, created Haverhill, Massachusetts and some, some others, uh, is there any, uh, any ill will toward those people who left uh, the home country? <laughs> well, I, I think that's ever so lovely to go and make a whole new Haverhill and make it another one all big and beautiful. Oh, I think that's ever so nice. A bit far away, though, if we want to come visit. Mavis, uh, you've been talking to Phyllis. We, we can't understand a word Phyllis is saying. Can you interpret for us? Oh, a lot of people have that problem, dear. Well, I understand because I've known her for donkey's years. We, we went to school together, yeah. We, we were like peas in a pod, us two, yeah. Well, she do all my filming and all the, all the technical stuff, but she don't like to be seen. Is that right, Phyllis? Mm. That's right, yeah. So, uh, and Phyllis is afflicted with the... Uh, the, the Haverhill Suffolk accent, is that I what I believe that's a Haverhill Suffolk, yeah, she's a bit something else as well. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't even think she know. <laughs> uh, Mavis, what, uh, can you tell us about your career? I understand you've been on the BBC. Uh, oh, we we right. saw you in a YouTube video, but uh, unfortunately I, I'm no, not overly familiar with all of your history and your well, appearances. The BBC have different radio stations for each county. And obviously, BBC Suffolk are uh, the ones that I talk to because that's in Suffolk, and they're in the capital, which is Ipswich. And I believe there's an Ipswich round here, is that right? That's right. People from Ipswich yeah. and Newbury founded Haverhill, New Massachusetts. Newbury, somewhere other than Suffolk, I don't know. There's a Braintree, and there's a Colchester, and a Norwich, but they're not in Suffolk, but they're in East Anglia. And East Anglia is where Suffolk is. Oh, okay. So all the names are ever so similar. Well, when I have traveled in England, one, first of all, we have to learn, uh, especially coming out of a roundabout, to stay left. Oh, uh, that's right, yeah, roundabout. I lost, I lost two hubcaps hitting the curbs. I know. Uh, <laughs> not used to driving on that side of the car. And unlike other Americans, I don't say it's the wrong side of the road. I say it's the left side of the road. It's, it's <laughs> a bit different. That's all it is. That's just different. But, Mavis, do you drive? No, Phyllis do all the driving. Oh, Phyllis drives She drive ever so slow, but we get there in the end. So you yeah. take the carriageways th throughout England? There's no dual carriageways and stuff. There's not big roads. They're ever so small. We always take the little winding roads, and that, that take about seven hours to get 20 miles, but that's all right. Yeah. Mavis, do you know much about the history of, of Haverhill, Suffolk? Well, I know a little bit. I know there was a grit old fire. A grit fire of 1667, which is interesting because that was a year after the Great Fire of London. And everything burnt down in the Great Fire of Haverhill. And all the houses that would have been all beautiful, like Lavenham, you should Google Lavenham if you get a chance. I did a video there as well. That looked like Harry Potter place. That's a beautiful place. Now all the houses would have looked like that if it weren't for the Great Fire of Haverhill. Oh, we it, was ever, it, was so, it was so sad. We, have a, we had a great fire, too, in 1882. Wow! All the similarities, see? Ooh. When you when you arrived, you took the train. You took Amtrak to Haverhill? Oh, I did. I couldn't believe there was a train to Haverhill. Uh, well, when you arrived, where you stepped off uh, was uh, about 51 buildings that were replaced the same year as the fire. Uh, while the bricks were still hot, they were replacing the buildings. Wow! That's efficient, isn't it? <laughs> it was a Queen Anne revival style uh, construction, yeah, so it's one of our one of our treasures. That's right. So I hear that Haverhill, Massachusetts, is famous for shoes. That's right. It was Making the Queen shoes. Slipper City. So apparently, the Queen, the Queen, Queen of England, the Queen of England, uh, wow. got her shoes. Actually, David Godswood, open mic show historian, might know a little more about which Queen was it Queen Victoria that got our shoes. Which queen do we refer to when the Queen Slipper City? Uh, it's a designation that we were the queen production, the center of production. 
and since it was lady shoes, we couldn't be the king lady slippers. Oh, you so I mean the the Queen of England never actually wore Haverhill shoes? Not that I'm aware of. No. Oh well, we well, just no, we just sure broke a myth. To. We just broke a myth then. Just tell him, tell him that she did. No one will know the difference. That's true. The Queen. You know, Victoria's dead. We, nobody will ever That's know right. the difference. That's <laughs> right. She, she don't know the difference. Maybe she did and she never knew. Oh, I'd like some Havel shoes. Is Mavis loyal to the crown? Oh, yeah. I've got food plates with ribbons around them from all the Jubilees, yep. Yeah. I oh, drink a cup that's got the Queen face on it. And then um, oh, Haverhill Suffolk is famous for a drabbit smock. Do you know what a drabbit smock is? No, I don't. That's a smock. That's a drabbit. And a, a smock is what people wear when they're doing farming and work. Well, we have smocks. That's right. I'm not sure what a drabbit is, but that's, a, that's what us called from Haverhill. And there was a, there was a family called the Gertines. Have you heard of the Gertines? I'm afraid not. Well, they were a very important family in Haverhill. And they invented the drabbit smock. And they had all the factories and stuff. They're, the Gertines are still there, I believe. Oh, so yeah. that's, that's the industrial history of That's of right. Haverhill. Industrial, agricultural, all that stuff. Has the Queen yeah. visited Haverhill? In oh, recent memory, know. anyway? Oh, we know Princess Anne came about 20 years ago. She came down in a helicopter. I can't remember why, but she was there. Well, England isn't all that big, uh, so how could they miss Haverhill? That's right, yeah. <laughs> Not many people come through, I don't, I don't think. We're just sort of tucked away there. Well, what do you know about that? Well, Mavis May, Mays. That's right, Mays. Mavis Mays. I'm Mavis. sorry, I keep doing that Mavis to you. Mavis Mays. Well, you're very, you're very smartly dressed with that, uh, well, with yeah. that scarf, and uh, those I glasses are very Gillett. becoming. No, <laughs> I can't see nothing without my glasses. So we appreciate your visiting the open mic show here at WHAV, obviously HAV for For Haverhill, yeah, that's right. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> so we'll, w have. we'll, we'll uh, make sure you, you come back at, at some point. And I understand you're going to be uh, touring uh, the <laughs> city of Haverhill, Massachusetts that's in the next right. few minutes. I should be doing some video. Well, Phyllis will be doing some videoing. And I should be looking around to see what I can see. Yeah. Uh, and, and Mavis, do you visit the, the States often? This is the first time I've been here, dear. Oh, I said I wouldn't go anywhere else if it was Haverhill, Massachusetts. It's the only reason why I'd come here. I see. And so, uh, and Phyllis, is Phyllis a, a good uh, a good escort for you? Well, she just come along. She come along for the pie. She love a good pie, she do, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Mavis Mays, it is wonderful to have you here yeah, in wonderful Haverhill, to see Massachusetts. You yeah. And we're looking forward to hearing more about your adventures. Do you have a particular YouTube channel people can look that's for? That's called Suffolk Fox. Yeah, that's my channel. And I'm also on the Facebook, Mavis Mays. That's Mavis with M-A-Y-E-S. Come and join it. Have, have, a, have a little look around, see what I've done see what I talk about <laughs> all sorts talk about your beans and gardening and whatever you like to talk about trains well perhaps yeah. uh, some future YouTube episode will we'll see what you really thought of it in right. Massachusetts I shall do one of them at some point yeah I shall well thank you very much for coming on the That's open mic show WHAB welcome to Haverhill Massachusetts and that was Mavis Mays, the foxy lady from Haverhill, Suffolk, England. Yeah, it's this is why WHAV is so important because big visitors and people with stories to tell that can only be told by radio. And, um, and like I said at the beginning of this spot, it's a bit of a throwback. And, okay, most of you aren't going to know what I'm talking about. Some of the older ones might. Some of those who at least read history might. But back in the old days of radio, Edgar Bergen uh, was a ventriloquist. And he had a wooden dummy, Charlie McCarthy, or other characters. Uh, Mortimer Smurd, Snurd, I think his name, is another character. And so, in a way... Um, 
Mavis Mays continues that tradition. She, uh, you saw, if those of you watching on WHAV.TV or on Facebook or on Channel 22, and and we and we we thank uh, uh, Haverhill uh, Community Television HC Media for for running this program. But you can see she did this entirely in character. Um, Mavis Mays uh, did the interview. It was not uh, the owner of Mavis Mays, so I think it's pretty fascinating. But we're going to do. Now is uh, get your birthday calls ready. We're going to go to open lines after this. We can talk about the Santa Parade. We can talk about uh, the elections last week. What surprised you? What didn't? Uh, maybe you want to do a junior analysis of, of what the voters did and why. We have all of that ready and have those birthday cake entries ready too uh, because the winner could receive a seven inch cake choice of vanilla or chocolate from Albie D's second generation Italian bakery, 140 South Main Street in Bradford. Let's take a, a break for community spotlight just a little late, but we'll be back in just a moment. Open mic! Tim Coco and the open mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. Stay informed each day with local news coupled with FSN's worldwide coverage. 97.9 97.9 WHAV is the only Haverhill based news source. There's always more at WHAV.net. Catch the wave! Melinda's Garden Moments help gardeners create and maintain a healthy, beautiful garden with ease, inside or out, and all year long. This is Melinda Myers inviting you to tune in every weekday morning right here on WHAV. You'll learn creative ways to grow your own vegetables and herbs while beautifying your landscape. Eco-friendly lawn care, flower garden design basics, unique container gardens, attracting birds and butterflies to the landscape, and much more. Again, please join me weekday mornings for Melinda's Garden Moment for a very environmentally friendly approach to gardening. Remember, only local radio can bring you this feature opportunity, but only WHAV does. Community Spotlight! It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas at Buttonwoods. The Haverhill Museum will play host to the 2017 Festival of Trees starting Friday, November 24th and running through December 8th. A gala night event to be held on Saturday, November 25th will include entertainment from Voices of Hope, food prepared by local chefs, and a silent auction. Tickets for the gala are $20. Admission for the rest of the event is $7 for adults, $5 for seniors, and $3 for children. Someone you know is on WHAV. To submit or read your own nonprofit announcements, click on the contact tab at whav.net or email news at whav.net. In the Edwin V. Johnson newsroom, this is Robin Fancher. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. And just before weather, uh, we we backed uh, back timed on this. Uh, we're back here on the Open Mic Show. I'm your host, Tim Coco. We've got some birthday calls coming up. You heard uh, so far on the program. You heard from Mavis Mays, literally from Haverhill, Suffolk, England. Uh, thank you very much to David Godsward, who uh, he arranged not only arranged this, uh, but he uh, flew up here because he now lives in Florida. He flew up here to make sure that. That he took Mavis Mays out for a tour of Haverhill, 
and it was uh, it was pretty exciting uh, to have a visitor who confirms that we pronounce uh, the city's name correctly. Every every now and then, you uh, I know Bar- Barney Gallagher did this. I think ni- in the 1970s, you send someone to England just to make sure, uh, or, you know, make some phone calls, make sure we're saying it right. But Mavis did uh, hint either either during that interview or before or after that. Uh, well, there is a dialect. Actually, she actually said it during the interview. There is some dialects uh, even within England that affect uh, how how things are pronounced. So that, that were all in all was very exciting. We really, again, thank you to David Galswood for putting this all together. Uh, so we have a, a BBC star right on your local radio station, your public radio station, WHAV. Okay, let's... Um, Let's take a birthday call, then we're going to take a break for local weather. Chris, is this on your side? Okay, you are on the open mic show. I have two birthdays coming up. Oh, there you go. Great. Who do you have? Cody Littlefield and Richie Littlefield. Okay, Cody? Is that his name? Cody and Ricky? Cody and Richie. R I C H I E. Richie. Cody and Richie. Wonderful. Happy birthday. How old are Cody and Richie? Cody's 16, and Richie would be about 13. All right, we need we need teenagers to listen to WHAV, so we're going to hope that uh, they stay on. <laughs> and that's 34 Howard Street in Haverhill. Oh, that's okay. I think Chris got that, I hope. Uh, got the address from you. All right. Oh, no, he didn't. That's why I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, all right. In that case, I'm going to make sure we write that down. But don't don't say it again. I don't want to uh, put it no, on the air. this is your safety advisor. I recognize your voice, and I hope you enjoyed talking with uh, City Councilor Tom Sullivan earlier about the VFW Santa Parade and all your great memories of holidays in Haverhill. Uh, yeah, and I sure hope they, they make it better by doing that GAR park thing. That would be nice. Well, you know, one of the one of the nice things I don't know if you if you heard WHAV's story after the election, and actually I think it was the day after that because we had so many news stories. But Haverhill Mayor uh, James Fiorentini on WHAV talking about some new priorities, some new directions for Haverhill beginning next year. And uh, if I, uh, I'm going to quote him, I think we have his actual quote somewhere. But uh, essentially, he said, "Okay, we we spent a lot of time on downtown." Uh, we we can see the results that uh, uh, that we have new buildings, we have new development coming, we have new residents downtown, we have a new boardwalk. Now it's time to look at other areas of the city. Now we don't know which areas will, will end up coming to the forefront, uh, but people like you, Safety Officer Dave, uh, always remind us that there are other areas of the city that need attention. You brought. Well, I talked about Plugs Pond. Uh, excuse me for interrupting you. No, that's fine. I talked to you, uh, them about Plugs Pond, and I feel as though they should have some yard sales up there for some people that can't find a place to go to a yard sale and, uh, you know, and collect some money to help fix up the pond. And they don't have to do it when the people are swimming. It's after the swimming season's over. You know, have, put them up on weekends and have, have some trash barrels there, parking, you know, charging for parking. And a little fee to get in, you know. It oh, would so be a so nice thing. Oh, sort of a community yard sale. Right. Oh. And, you know, it would build up and it would show that the city is trying to do something. And at the same time, you could use the money to fix up the pond. And, you know, those are great ideas, you know, and I know the city council has been talking about some of this. Uh, city council at Joe Bevilacqua, for example, has been talking about naming things around the city uh, for individuals in exchange for donations. I bet I bet he's listening right now. And he's I wel- hope so. And, and he, also, he's welcome to call in, by the way. Yeah, uh, and I also talked about the bicycle thing long before they, they brought it up in Whistler, if you remember right. The safety advising thing on bicycles oh, and right. roads. That's right. And, and nothing that happened to that yet. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, and I think that they should get a ticket for being in the road, just like we get a ticket with our cars. Oh, good point. Good point. And actually, and I, I think you mentioned... Dollars. I think you mentioned that we used to have, and I remember this myself, there used to be license plates for bicycles. You used to pin it right underneath the seat. Right, yeah, and license plates. And I don't, yeah, know, uh, I don't know if those are still made, if they were ever really anything important. No, but I, no I don't think so. I think you could probably get one out of a Cheerios box or a complex box. Now, I wonder, if Chris, did you ever have a, a bicycle with a license plate? 
Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, you did. Okay. Yeah. I kind of remember mean, one too. You know, you, you had to have a reflector, a horn, a light. They don't have none of that. No, no, it is dangerous, and I yeah. hope I hope parents are listening, uh, and not, and not some. Only parents, I hope the officers are listening, and they do something about it because. There's too many accidents, too many people, kids driving in the road, they don't care no more. Cars don't mean nothing to them until they get hit. Now, that's true. Maybe we can have um, someone from the Haverhill Police Department on uh, some future show. Maybe maybe City Councilor McGonagall, who has been in charge of public safety, the Public Safety Committee of the City Council. Maybe it's a good time to have kind of a kind of a, a little group meeting about some of the safety issues. And then Safety Officer Dave, you could either come in person or you could do it by phone. And we'll whatever, uh, you know, whatever. And uh, I would appreciate it. You know, we get some of these things done. Some improvements in the city of Haver would be nice, especially like I've been on Plux Pond, you know, for a while now, hoping to see something get done up there. They, they, I know they've done a little bit. Of, uh, they fixed that building up. That was nice. And, um, the, you know, they put up these little, uh, they look like umbrellas. That, that's nice. I, you know, it, ain't, it don't look like Miami, Miami Beach, but it's starting to improve. You know, a few park benches in there. Uh, you can sit down and relax and fish, you know, and, and enjoy it. It, it. We only have one pond, and this city makes some use of it. All right. Well, one that we can swim in anyway, yes. Well, I don't know about swimming. I don't go swimming, but I do do some fishing. Well, have you been to Round Pond? What about some of the other ponds? Round Pond? Well, you can't have no yard sales up there, but that is clean. That's very clean as far as I'm concerned, cleaner than it has been. All right, so uh, listen, you got a good list, and I want you to keep on that list because we're going to do a special show at some point with all of these safety issues. Uh, we'll bring in uh, maybe Officer Malone, uh, who does some work, maybe uh, others from the police department. We'll bring in uh, some city councilors, and uh, I, I think I think a lot of people are interested in what you're saying. Uh, I hope so because, like I said, uh, you know, a lot of people have stuff to put out at a yard sale. And they want twenty dollars a table. Hey, even if they got fifteen dollars, ten dollars a table up there, it's money to help fix up the pond. You know, help to do some things in in this city. Hey, even if you had to put a little band up there that play some music and enjoy it, you know, get the people together. This is the, the what life's all about. Get people together and put on a little show, and everything be nice and you know. Well, thank you for keeping this keeping this in the forefront. We really appreciate that. We need we need more uh, civic minded citizens like more yourself. Activities. But thank you very much. I really and do also, appreciate it. One more thing. Also, they should put a basketball court up there, a horseshoe pit, and you have the people that are in the shed uh, hold the basketballs and the horseshoes, but have it fenced in. The course, the the basketball court. This is something they don't have up there. This is something they should have up there. You know, that's actually an interesting discussion. Maybe we'll talk a little more and about that later. And horseshoe pit, adults only, you know. Yeah, I, I actually, I wonder how many people play horseshoes. I, I, I hope to hear from some other listeners after this uh, okay. who tell me hey, about that. Jim, you take care of yourself, and well, God bless you. Well, thank happy you very much. Happy Thanksgiving, and happy Merry Christmas. Well, happy Thanksgiving to you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, although I, I think we'll be back before that. But just in case, thank you very well, much. nice talking to you. <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah, All right. That's great. Thank you. All right. Let's take a break for weather. Uh, Chris, we have another call here. Yeah, I, I think we have another caller waiting. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, caller. We're gonna go to we're gonna take a brief break for local weather, and then we'll be back with more of the open mic show in just a minute. Open mic. Tim Coco and the open mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 738. 97.9 WHAV. Catch the wave! 
Hi, Tom Berger on here. I started at WHAV in 1972. And look, WHAV is still here, but it won't be if you don't help support it. Go to WHAV.net. Become a contributor. Keep us going. Wave weather. I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with Wave Weather. Any showers or wet snow showers ending during tonight, it'll become partly to mostly cloudy. Low to mid-30s by morning. Mostly cloudy and about 45 on Tuesday, near 32 at night. And Wednesday, developing sun well up in the 40s. This is meteorologist Gary Best. Your next Wave Weather is coming up in 30 minutes. WHAV! Mike. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. 7.39 here on the open mic, 97.9 FM WHAV. Thank you for joining us tonight. Okay, let's uh, – we have another call. Why don't we do that first? We'll take that call, and then we're going to talk about all kinds of things, anything you want to talk about. Have the number ready, 978-374-1900, 978-374-1900. Okay, you are on the open mic. Hey, how are you, Tim? Hey, nice to hear from you. How are you? Same here. I uh, expected Chris to pick up, and I got a pleasant surprise, and I talked to Cindy. Ah, see, Cindy? Cindy is uh, Cindy's always a pleasant surprise. Chris, well, I don't know. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> hey, it was good to hear. He was on a roll about uh, different things going on in Haverhill. It, uh, I just remember growing up in Haverhill. It, 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 was, it, was, it was wonderful. We swam in all, all, every, we swam in Little River, Brown Pond, Plugs Pond, Canosa Lake, Melville. You know, we had we had ropes everywhere, swings. I heard about some of those wild parties down by the pipes over the Little River. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> see that that laugh gives it all away. You know, I, I on my uh, on my school bus route. I get down Jeffrey Lane on the right, going up by the uh, Hillville Cemetery. Yes. And I go down the end to the, uh, you go down it, Tim, take a ride up. It's the right before the, the uh, cemetery. Go out to the turnaround, and you can look over. Now all the leaves are done, you can see the pipe. Oh, really? Okay. The pipe that crosses Little River. Yeah, it's funny. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't been down there in years, so I, I didn't. Go right down. Anyway, um, I've got a question from Kimball Tavern. No longer Kimball Tavern Antiques at this moment. But we're, Craig's going to bring over some, um, Sports memorabilia for the prize. Oh, really? Yeah, he's coming over. I think he said tomorrow, but I think uh, this is going to be out there for a little while. All right, you got. I gave Cindy all the uh, answers. You got to name me. There was roughly uh, around 1900. There was roughly 14, maybe 15 um, schools, brick schools built in Haverhill. How many? 14 or 15. Okay. Um, and, uh, and a lot of the brick came out of Smiley the Brickyard, I'm sure. And then there's one of them, Smiley School. So you've got to give me uh, 12 of the schools. Okay. 12 of them. Uh, she's got the answers. All right. Now, I'm curious about one, uh, but I don't want to give too much away on there. So is it, does it have to be 1900, or can it be some of the ones that are a little bit earlier than uh, that? No, well, yeah, no. It can be, yeah, I mean, 1898, yeah, okay. Oh, because oh, really? I I, I mean, used to I used to live in one that was built in 1868. Okay. Oh, you did. Yeah. <laughs> right, so that was a one, one room school room. Oh, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't want to give away too much. All right. No, no. Okay. I'm talking about these brick ones. Okay, that was brick. Okay. Oh, it was. Yeah. It's actually it was a two room schoolhouse, but I don't want to give too much yeah, away. Okay. <laughs> so, well, that, that's not one of my answers, but I mean, if. Uh, um, I've got 12 here. I've got 14 here. All right, so what we'll do is we'll make it more than two classrooms, and we'll take those out. <laughs> yeah, more than two, more than two, because there, were, there was two up at, um, there was one on Broadway, way up the East Village. I know my neighbor George was just telling me about it, and there was one coming out of Liberty Street, 
uh, one wrong one when you go down, take a right, a right to go back to Haverhill, the second house on the right. The people live in, in these houses now. Do people live in your your old house? Yeah, actually, uh, now that now that it's not eligible for the prize, I'll, I'll t mention it. Okay. It was uh, the Primrose School, um, two rooms. And one upstairs, one downstairs, and there's a twin of it, although it doesn't look as, as the same anymore because there's a front on it now. But uh, Locust Street School was identical. They built oh, the same. Locust? Yeah, Locust Street School and Primrose Street School are identical buildings. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Oh, I got another one. I just remembered another school. Oh, yeah, see? You see, you bring these up, and I just remembered another one. Uh, but, uh, now the Locust Street School became what the Greek school about what 1922, uh, and they have a new front. Now that was the same thing. One upstairs, one downstairs. But okay. you probably know it better as the offices of the Haverhill Journal. Oh, I, I never knew that was a school. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, if you can give me twelve, I mean, uh, there's a, there's a few I left out. I just thought of one, uh, and it, it's off of Summer Street. Uh, there you go. All right. See how it goes. Yeah. Well, okay. Plus, uh, plus, if you, I'll give you an extra bonus if you can tell me where. In Bradford, there's one, there's one, one room schoolroom still standing that nobody lives in. We'll give you ten packs of baseball cards. Ten packs. That's right. Wow. But, but we'll give you if you come up with this. I, card, I, I know the answer, so I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be okay, very careful. Okay, <laughs> but if you, we'll give you ten packs if they know the answer to that question. But if you know the answer to all these other ones, then you'll get a big. Uh, you get the jackpot. Wow, okay. Yeah, well, he's going to drop off a, b a bunch of sports uh, stuff for you. All right, let's, hopefully we can do it in the afternoon. We'll be tied up with some news stuff in the morning, but if oh, not, right. we'll work no, it out. No, if no, not, I'll meet you, because you guys are so wonderful. Hey, by the way, um, Craig might be interested to hear this. We had the um, Buttonwoods Museum scavenger hunt. Uh, WHAV was one of the stops. We couldn't announce it ahead of time, because it was a secret. Uh, but, uh, I don't know, a hundred people came through here, and wow. one of the things they saw was a radio donated by Kimball Tavern Antiques. Uh, it was this kind of crystal set uh, thing with, you could see all the parts. Uh, Craig will know what I'm talking about, but yeah, it was yeah. a big hit. Oh, nice. So well, you that, guys... That went over pretty good, the scavenger hunt. Yeah, you guys are just so wonderful to us and to, oh, well, the, to Haverhill. Yeah, they did go to the Kimball Tavern. Oh, did they? Okay. Yeah, was, I, I, think, well, I think the first year, but, uh, you know... I, Things will work out. Something will work out with it, you know. All right, so uh, I, I, I don't want to put you on the spot. So is it for rent or is there... Well, a, we're not sure what's going on. All right, well, we all look forward to it because you've done, you know, uh, Craig, the family has done just a wonderful job uh, restoring that building, well, making it presentable. It. It's a beautiful old building. And I'll, and I'll tell you right now in Haverhill, there's, I know in, in, in New England and the uh, United States, there's, there's uh, two other Haverhills. In the United States, one's in New Hampshire and there's one in Florida. That's right. Actually, you know, David Godswood was talking about the one in Florida. Oh, oh he yeah. doesn't know much about the history, trying to figure out how it was started. Do you know? No, I have no idea. But I, I, it's funny how uh, Haverhill uh, and Bradford are, uh, in New Hampshire are um, right, right near each other. And what did you think of that interview with Mavis Mays? That was nice. That was nice. I, I, it was kind of. A little fuzzy on the voice I, for some reason. Well, I, you know, I think I know. some of it is the accent because uh, it yeah, was done. No, I know it. No, it I was just over the pond. Oh, oh, that's right. That's right. You visit there once yeah, in a while. My, my aunt, my aunt, my mom's sister, uh, she's she's sick. I want to spend a week with. Well, her. like I said, this was kind of our little tribute, to, in a way, to Barney Gallagher because every so many decades we have to check to make sure we're still saying the name right. Yeah, Barney was, uh, <laughs> he was quite a guy. But isn't it funny how Abel, New Hampshire, and and and, and Bradford. New Hampshire uh, almost side by side. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny. I don't know. I'm sure you've done this. Uh, maybe you didn't think too much about it, but I know that years ago when I was younger, I just took a road trip, uh, maybe yeah. like what Larry does, uh, who comes on our program once in a while. What's that? Did you go up there? No, I drove. I actually drove down south. I drove from here, yeah. and, and then you go into places. You go to, like, for example, the state of Virginia, oh, and yeah, you yeah, see yeah. Essex County. And then you see uh, Middlesex County and right. Suffolk County, and like, wow, you know. Yeah, I've been down. I've been down through all those states. Yeah, and so I guess we all the colonies did the same thing. They tried to recreate England within the colonies, so they all have <laughs> these counties. They're all the same. There's, and, and there's only there's only two sand downs in the world. 
Oh, really? I didn't. I didn't know that. So there's, there's one in Sand down New Hampshire. There's no other one, and there's no other, and there's one. I'm not sure. It's either in Wales or the Isle of Wight. I think it's Wales. No, no. The, I think it's the Isle. It's either the Isle of Wight or the Isle of Man. Oh, it's it's down. Now, Cindy's using technology to let me know uh, the answers to the trivia question in case someone comes up with it. All right. So, um, well, uh, yeah, there are, there are, they have to be at least four, four rooms or eight. Most of them are four and eight, eight rooms. Uh, that's helpful. So, we'll start, we, can we start that contest right away? Yeah, oh, yeah. All right, that's folks, you've got it. There's a contest from Kimball Tavern. Um, we'll, we'll review all of that after the break, but that is wonderful. Thank you for your generosity. Uh, you guys are just wonderful to hey, WHAV hey, and its love, listeners. I love the show. We all love it. We like the show. Um, it's, I listen to it as much as I can. Actually, well, I got your radio station really good, and I'm surprised because you know where I am. I'm down in the hollow up here. Oh. I, it came in crystal clear the other night on your radio, on my radio. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, it was nice. All right, I'll no, we have go. a good signal. Uh, thank you very much. I uh, really appreciate everything. Uh, for the Brothers Wood, I call you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. he's, coming, he's, come, he's coming in to see you. All right, th- oh, that'd be wonderful. Thanks so much. Okay, bye-bye. All right, thank you. Take bye-bye. care. Bye-bye. All right, folks. Well, yes, this is another wonderful contest, and uh, some of this we might have to continue uh, outside of open mic, maybe during our regular programming, uh, because I, I'm sure this is going to be a hit. And uh, we'll go through uh, the questions, but let's first let's take a break as we as we do each hour. Take a break, and we'll be back with more of the open mic show. Your calls, your questions, your birthday wishes, all coming up next. Open mic. Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. 97.9 WHAV. If you're looking not only to make money, but also to make a difference, 97.9 WHAV wants you. WHAV, the only Haverhill-based news source, seeks enthusiastic, creative, and disciplined on-air underwriting and web advertising representatives. Account executives are responsible for developing and supporting WHAV's radio, digital, and non-traditional sales and development strategy. Prior sales experience is desired but some training will be provided. Receive a generous and above-average commission rate and opportunities for growth. To apply, visit whav.net and click Contact and scroll down to Jobs. Otherwise, call 978-374-2111, extension 111. That's 978-374-2111, extension 111. Make money and make a difference at 97.9 WHAV. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. And welcome back to the Open Mic Show. Okay, so now open lines uh, for the remainder of the program. Here's your uh, almost last chance to get in your birthday or anniversary wishes. So someone celebrating in December uh, birthday or a couple celebrating an anniversary in December, just call 978-374-1900. Wish them a happy birthday or happy anniversary, and their name will be entered into the contest to win a free 7-inch cake, choice of vanilla or chocolate, from Albedee's second-generation Italian bakery, 140 South Main Street in Bradford. All right, and we will do that about quarter past 8. Now, here's an announcement we've just received. Uh, 
from the Buttonwoods Museum. Uh, perhaps you were planning to drop off your tree, your wreath, or your centerpiece uh, for their special event this year. Well, that has been extended. So here it is. Buttonwoods Museum has extended their tree, wreath, or centerpiece drop-off to this Friday, the 17th, and Saturday, the 18th, from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. So you still have a chance. Uh, to, this is part of their, I'm, I'm believing this is part of their Festival of Trees uh, event. Uh, so a tree, a wreath, or a centerpiece, you can drop it off Friday or Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, anyone who's interested in donating for the Festival of Trees and they want to get into the holiday spirit, bring your donation to the museum and decorate it. Well, thank you very much. Here's another listener to the Open Mic Show uh, recognizing that there's a public service uh, for radio in Haverhill, and these are the kinds of ways. Uh, it may not seem very sophisticated, uh, but this is what public radio was all about, getting people the information about their own communities, things that matter to people, things that matter to our local charities, our, our local institutions. And so we thank uh, Buttonwoods Museum for alerting us uh, to the extension of the Festival of Trees drop-off. Anyone has any other questions about it, feel free to give us a call, 978-374-1900. Okay, uh, we have another call on your side, Chris. So you are on the Open Mic Show. Good evening. Good evening, Tim. How are you? Hey, Jerry. How are you? Good. I have, we haven't talked. You've been off a couple of nights. Oh no, we had uh, like, we had between we've had debates. We've had yeah. special programs. Uh, and to, uh, the um, the other thing was that uh, <laughs> that the uh, the time which is showing on community TV is eight five fifty five, and <laughs> in other words, they didn't change it. No, they haven't changed the time, so you almost missed the show. You thought. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I I told. Uh, Chris about it, and uh, so Methuen has a new mayor and uh, and a lot of new city councilors. How's that yeah, going to shape up in January? Women. What do you think of that? Well, you know that the, the, the term limits, uh, we, we said this on our newscast election night, of course, and before that, that term limits is going to change the face of uh, the city council and uh, the and mayors. It is. We got a 19 year old. Right, so you that? 19 year old. He's, he goes to a low university. He goes to the one of the colleges I went to. Oh, that's right. So, yeah, well, tell us Hamilton. tell us what yeah. you think. I, I mean, I'm assuming you're going to oh, wishing I them think, all good uh, luck. I think, that, I think that Methuen is on the move. Yes, Lord Methuen would be, uh, of, of England, Lord Methuen would be very proud of Methuen, right? <laughs> all right, so you have a lot of new faces. You are confident of, about the future. I am. Uh, because, uh, you know, the new man really doesn't have much in the way of uh, you know uh, special needs for camp campaign contributors because probably it, it costs them something to run because you you always have to be you know have to be visible even though you're un unchallenged but not the kind of money that it takes to run a campaign like uh, mayor that's for sure so with that saying with saying that and Using a, for, uh, a term that all the politicians use is uh, going forward. <laughs> I think he's going to be a good mayor. I think he's going to be a good mayor, and I think this is going to be a good council. Five women, hey, uh, I think so. Yeah. So, what do you what do you think will be the? I mean, uh, do you foresee any particular issue uh, being overturned in January or changed differently than we've seen because of the new face of government in Methuen? I, I, well, I, ju I don't know about changing, but I, I know that certain projects that uh, uh, Mayor Elect Juga likes that would like to get addressed. What, what are those? At the DPW garage, which right now is receiving a treatment for you know, for waste material that was dumped in their backyard there. Oh, okay. That would, he, that's one of the first things he's going to be looking at. If I were him, I would change the reorganization right now. I, I hate the, uh, I hate the way it is. All, all the divisions of the departments in the city of Thun, except the fire and police, except the fire and police and the dog catcher. <laughs> okay. All of them are under community development, which is really pro economic, pro development. Like we see that in this 40B project that they're 
that I'm working on to, uh, you know, that they're trying to push through. What is this, the overlay district or something else? Uh, no, the overlay is another thing. Uh, you know, we're going to go very cautiously with that, I'm sure, because it's a lot of historical uh, landmarks there, and, and uh, already the Historical Society has said uh, you know, that they're not concerned as long as the uh, the face you know, it continues to have the face of Methuen, you know? Hey, you know, that reminds me. So Methuen should be doing its big Festival of Trees thing, right? Yes, you're stealing our stuff. Actually, I don't know that I've received anything yet from them. Uh, uh, Sharon Pollard still uh, running that organization? I don't know. I don't think so. I, I haven't heard from Sharon Pollard for an awful long time. Uh, you know, I, I really, she hasn't been involved. Oh, well, uh, we're going to do a we're going to do a shout out now that uh, Methuen organizes. Be sure to let us know what's happening. We've covered these things yes, before. Uh, speaking of your, uh, about your guest tonight, uh, is Mr. Tom is Mr. Tom Sullivan is he a singer? Is he a singer? I don't yes. think so. Why do you ask? Well, because he made a statement that uh, that perked me pretty much. He said it's. It's Christmas time in the city, and guess where that that comes from? Oh, right. He did make a reference to it. Why don't you tell us? Silver bells, silver bells. It's Christmas time in the city. Ding-a-ling, hear the ring. Soon it will be Christmas Day. Wonderful. And for some reason, Chris and Cindy are hanging up stockings in the uh, control <laughs> room. All and right. I'm talking about the other guest in, in the impact of England, uh, William Penn. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. From uh, Pennsylvania. Well, he, he had a royalty. He had a royalty uh, title. What was it? That's a trivia question. Oh, I don't know. He I was the Earl of Chatham. Ah, okay. What do you and know about that? Well, how I know that? Because you're the Earl of Chatham today. No. No. <laughs> I, was on the, I was on the big pay payoff, and that was question number two. Oh. I answered the first question, the big payoff. Remember that program, Bess Meyerson and Randy Merriman? No, actually, I remember you telling me you got all the way, what, to one question from winning... One question from the big, from the big kazoo. Yeah, I uh. answered three. All right, so you have... You, have three. you must have some regrets about that, huh? <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah, for the father's point, Barrow, I should have known that. Uh, the father's point... What was the, what was the jackpot? A million dollars? No, at that time it was like, I don't know, 100000 or something. Well, that's like a million today, right? The thing that I really wanted to, in leaving, I know I don't have much time. No, because actually we got to go to news. I, I just wanted to say we've had some environmental news lately. One was the uh, upset at the Great Alliance Sanitary District. Yeah, the power so, outage, yes. Yes. There was no excuse for that, Tim, really. You know... Was that, uh, that was avoidable in your mind? Uh, I have never, I, I, I approved a lot of, never, not many waste, waste treatment plants, but I approved a lot of water supply plants, and I never approved one. I never approved the plants of, of any of them that didn't have an alternative source of power like a generator. Oh, right, that makes but, sense. But, yeah, but some, they didn't even have enough generating capacity to disinfect, like for example, uh, they, 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 they said that they've, they discharged 9 million. Their average flow is 52 million a day. That's what their average flow Well, that's right. Is. I think you left me a, a voicemail on that. Yes, I did. That's so, right. So, the, so their, uh, their volume that they discharged was very, very significantly under, under inflated, I'll tell you. And uh, when they said nine million, it it had to be more like twenty or thirty. And the thing that's important to Haverhill is that Haverhill is in the, in the process of constructing a radio well downstream. Oh, absolutely, from, you're right. Yeah, so you, we don't want this to happen again. No, 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 we don't want that over our new well. No, we don't want that over your new well discharging and having 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 to, you know. So uh, as I said. Even though it was National Grid that probably hasn't maintained the lines, that's one of the problems. Uh, the last time we right. had this kind of a, uh, an outage, uh, National Grid uh, hadn't done any what they call maintenance. Yeah, it was 2008 we had a bad one, but I'm, I'm afraid we're out of time. Can you wrap up? 
Well, that's it. Uh, I just wanted to say we can never let that happen again. Uh, uh, these facilities uh, who say, well, we've got power coming in two, from two directions, that's, that's not, that's not going to cut the, cut the ice, uh, you know? No, I think I, you're absolutely right. All right. All right, well, thank you very much, and uh, we'll look forward to future updates, and I think you're going to hey, be very happy. that song, huh? Silver Bells, huh? Yeah, great, uh, great job. Great job. Thank you. Well, maybe you win some baseball cards, all right? <laughs> uh, is, the gum, uh, is the gum included? Yeah, it's, it's about 30 <laughs> years old, but I, I, bet it, I bet it's as fresh as it was then. <laughs> Uh, Which is 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. All right. Our friend Jerry from Methuen. Okay, we are going to local news. A little bit late. This is WHAVLP. Haverhill will be back with open mic and the birthdays. Yeah, I know you. I know we got a caller on hold. If you just bear with us, we'll work this out. All right. We'll be back. Open mic. Tim Coco and the open mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 8.05. WHAV LP Haverhill. Here's what's happening in local news. Haverhill property owners will find out Tuesday night whether or how much their taxes will increase during the coming year. City councilors will debate tax classification for residential and commercial properties at their annual hearing on the subject. The council meets at 7 p.m. in the Theodore A. Pelosi City Council Chambers on the second floor of Haverhill City Hall. The meeting is open to the public. Before councillors decide how they'll split the tax burden, Mayor James Fiorentini will let city councillors know how he plans to use nearly $11 million in free cash. At the council's last meeting, the mayor indicated he's leaning toward using about a million dollars to reduce an anticipated tax increase and direct between 4 and $6 million toward the $185.7 million needed to run the city this year. Currently, residential property owners pay $14.99 per thousand dollars of assessed valuation, meaning the owner of a $300,000 home pays about $4,500 a year in taxes. The owner of commercial property pays $26.43 per thousand dollars of value. The city arrived at these tax rates after last year's tax classification hearing, in which councilors shifted the commercial property tax burden higher by the smallest amount possible which raised the average business tax bill by $9 a year and the average residential tax bill by $138 for the year. Methuen police are asking for the public's help in identifying two men who broke into a Lowell Street convenience store early Friday morning. Police released portions of surveillance videos Saturday showing two hooded men breaking into the 611 Variety Store, 466 Lowell Street, around 3.15 a.m. on Friday. After breaking into the store, the men fished through drawers and cabinets and may have fled in a light blue Jeep Cherokee with a Massachusetts dealer plate. Anyone with information is asked to call the Methuen police at 978-983-8698. Photographs and video are available at whav.net. If you travel Interstate 95 near Newbury, be prepared for detours and lane closures today. The Massachusetts Department of Transportation plans to temporarily close the on and off ramps to and from I-95 at exit 56 Scotland Road. The closures are required to allow pavement resurfacing. Closures begin at 9 a.m. and continue through 3.30 p.m., where it begins in the morning with the Scotland Road ramps to and from I-95 northbound closed. Southbound ramps will be closed during the afternoon. Morning northbound traffic will be detoured to exit 57, Story Avenue, Newburyport, to reverse direction onto I-95 southbound and back to Scotland Road. Those driving along Scotland Road seeking northbound highway access will be detoured to the on-ramp to I-95 South and then directed to exit 55 Central Street to reverse direction. Afternoon traffic along I-95 southbound will be toured to Central Street to reverse direction. 
Scotland Road traffic seeking to access the on-ramp southbound will be detoured to the on-ramp to I-95 North and then directed to Story Avenue to reverse direction. There'll also be lane closures on sections of Scotland Road east and west. The state Senate last week passed health care reform legislation aimed at cutting costs and helping community hospitals. It also included amendments designed to help seniors and adults with disabilities and force the state to consider adopting single-payer health insurance. Senators passed the bill 33-6. to 6. Senator Barbara Latalian said she sponsored several amendments that allow senior residents receiving mass health benefits to choose assisted living homes, allow people with disabilities over age 26 to continue receiving insurance from their parents, and expands access to the Medicare savings programs to reduce costs for low-income seniors on Medicare. Despite uncertainty and recklessness at the federal level, Massachusetts continues to show that it will do what it takes to take care of its residents, said Litalian. Our government should be judged by how we treat our most valuable citizens, she added. Fifty of the 162 amendments survived the final vote after two days of debate. The bill now moves to the House. The bill also requires the state to compare its annual spending with a single-payer health care system similar to Medicare but available to everyone. If single-payer proves to be less expensive, officials would have to develop a plan to put that model into place, Latalian said. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source. There's always more at WHAV.net. From the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Eric Scott. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Priscilla Huff. More than 400 are dead and 7,000 injured after an earthquake of more than 7.2 magnitude hit the Iran-Iraq border. The chief of Zimbabwe's army says he might be forced to step in if the political purges continue, but he didn't accuse President Robert Mugabe of anything specific. A soldier is now in hospital after being shot by his own military while defecting from North Korea to South Korea. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best with Wave Weather. Any showers or wet snow showers ending during tonight, it'll become partly to mostly cloudy. Low to mid-30s by morning. Mostly cloudy and about 45 on Tuesday, near 32 at night. And Wednesday, developing sun well up in the 40s. This is meteorologist Gary Best. Your next wave weather is coming up in 30 minutes. 97.9 WHAV is the only FM station assigned to the city of Haverhill. Your membership is critical to continued operation. It's easy to join. Just click on the membership tab at WHAV.net. Ninety-seven point nine FM WHAV. Catch the wave, WHAV, Merrimack Valley. Open mic. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Open mic! Chris will take care of that. 12 minutes past the hour here on 97.9 FM WHAV. And this is the Open Mic Show. I think we had a call. We've been waiting a long time. Let's go to that call. You are on the Open Mic. Hello, Tim. It's Mark from Haverhill. How are you? Ah, uh, Mark, how are you? Well, thank you. Uh, so it's your birthday coming up. Happy birthday. De- thank you very much. In December, yes. All right, and thank you for all your help behind the scenes working on our music library. Oh, you're very welcome. My pleasure. All right, what else is on your mind? Uh, not a whole heck of a lot. I was wondering who you were talking about with Jerry from Methuen, who was a singer. For some reason, I only could hear one end of the conversation while I was on hold. Oh, that's right. When you're on hold in this room, that happens. This room is going to be rebuilt. But anyway, Jerry is a singer. And okay. He participated in some really big uh, bands uh, in the day, and he still has a great voice, doesn't he? Excellent, yes. 
Yeah, considering I, I can't remember how old he said he is, and I, maybe he wouldn't want me to say, uh, but uh, he's uh, he does a great job. He worked for the Department of Environmental Protection even before it had that for a name. Excellent. Uh, goes all the way back to the public health department. But he um, uh, his, uh, he used to tell us on the open mic show that one of his chief competitors was a former Haverhill mayor, George Katsaris. Uh -huh. uh, and George Casares had his own band, uh, and they played at the Crystal Room at George K's Crystal Lounge in downtown Haverhill. Very good. That's where Ocasio's is right now. Okay. All right. So no, it may not be one of the one one of the oldies you're thinking of, but uh, who knows? But of course, you're familiar okay. with the Christmas songs. I think you're also helping curate our Christmas song collection this year. Well. I think uh, my pal Dave is helping do that. Yeah, uh, Dave so does a great, great job. I love Christmas music. Dave actually did a, a big favor for uh, Buttonwoods Museum. Uh, he uh, interviewed lots of people during his extended show a couple weeks ago, or well, a yeah. week a week and a few days ago, during the Buttonwoods Museum scavenger hunt. Did you listen to that? I heard that. That was excellent. Yeah, he he had a long air shift, six hours, but uh, he Absolutely. did a great job. He always does. I enjoy his show a lot. All right, so just keep spreading the good word. Absolutely. All right, so anything else on your mind? I can't say there is, uh, but uh, Dave will be featuring Little Richard this Saturday on the Rock and Roll Oldies Party from 3 to 6. Are you going to be in the studio, too? I will not be in the studio this week, but at some point, hopefully sooner than later, I will be the co-host on Dave Mack's Rock and Roll Oldies Party. Wonderful, wonderful. Looking forward to it. Thank you very much. I look forward to it as well. All right, thanks, and we'll keep working on that library. Thank you for your, all your help. Always a pleasure. Keep up the good work. All right, thank you, and happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Bye. You too. Bye-bye. All right, that was Mark. So, so we uh, we have a, a full house here. Chris, do we have calls on your side too? All right, I can drop that one. Okay. All right, so, uh, well, I, uh, there was a caller who called uh, during the news with, uh, with a birthday wish, I think, or several. Perhaps uh, if, if she wouldn't mind, we're going to give her a minute to call back and try to get that on the air because we always like to have the listeners on the air. So 978-374-1900. You know what? Uh, earlier in the program, of course, we heard Tom Sullivan talk about the upcoming 53rd annual VFW Santa Parade. That's this Sunday, 1 o'clock, uh, starting at the Bradford Fire Station, ending at the VFW, the old VFW Post 29 building on Canosa Avenue. Uh, so be sure that, uh, that you know, you're ready for that. And uh, Tom told us that if you have a last-minute float, he can still accommodate you through uh, this Thursday. So keep that in mind. And, of course, they can always take contributions. Uh, now, we also had on the program earlier Mavis Mays from Haverhill, Suffolk, England, and she has a special appeal that uh, she wanted to pass along to WHAV. Let's, uh, let's put that on. Hello, dears. This is Mavis. Mavis Mays of Haverhill in Suffolk, you know, the town in England that you lovely lot have named your city after. <laughs> and this here radio station, WHAV, that's your local station. Now... We have BBC Suffolk, which is a, ever such a lovely station, but that's not a hometown station. So you should support your hometown station and, and you should become a member. Why don't you do that? Just click on the membership tab at whav.net. Yep. See, now Mavis Mays is helping us with a membership pitch. Giving Tuesday is coming up. And frankly, this, this year, more important than ever, we have a big rebuild coming uh, of our air chain and our newsroom. And, of course, that has been supported uh, by a number of organizations and donors. Uh, some have asked to be anonymous. Uh, but we want to uh, make sure this is special. So we're going to be taking some time off on the open mic uh, during the rebuild. Of course, we'll remain on the air 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, during that uh, big power outage uh, a couple weeks ago, that was a big disaster for us. Our studio's Power, but we do have a generator at the transmitter building up on top of Silver Hill, and we're able to continue for the most part uh, programming. There were other outages that took place, and then the generator had to be refueled. So 
we apologize for any interruptions, but part of why this year is so important to receive your donations, and if you're already a member, thank you. If you can add a little bit to that, uh, your generosity will really help. We need to we need to to do a few things to make sure the WHAV remains on the air at all times during emergencies, and that was certainly a lesson uh, for us. Uh, but so keep that in mind. Uh, we is this or, okay? We have a, a birthday call. On my end. Okay, Marilyn. someone's on this end. Okay, you are on the air. My name is Marilyn. Hi, ah, Marilyn. How are you? I'm good. All right, so you have uh, some birthday wishes you'd like to, to make? Yeah, my daughter, Cheryl. All right, Cheryl. Happy birthday. And anyone else? My granddaughter, Alexandria. Alexandria. Cheryl and Alexandria. Do you know what, what days their birthdays are? Alexandria, I believe, is the 6th, and the 23rd is the sheriff. All right. Well, thank you very much, and I'm sure they're, you've... Uh, they don't know anything about it. <laughs> oh, they don't know, so they might win. All right. You, all right. We're going to do that drawing right after we do Community Spotlight. So uh, you, okay. st you stay listening, and we'll find out whether they won. How's that? All right. And have you listened to WHAV before? Yeah, you yeah. But recently, I... It's the only channel that really can get in very well where I am at. So, and I love it. I love the choice for the oldies. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. So you keep listening to 97.9 FM then. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. We'll, uh, we'll do the drawing in just a minute. Right, thank All you. Right. Thank you so much. Okay, so what we're going to do is take Community Spotlight, and then we're going to come back and do the drawing. And the hat is full. You guys have been very good tonight. Uh, we'll be right back with more of the Open Mic Show. Public Radio for Greater Haverhill. This is 97.9 WHAV. Hi, I'm meteorologist Gary Best. Do you need to know if it's going to be hot or cold, wet or dry? Well, find out every half hour, seven days a week with Wave Weather. I'll keep you in touch with up-to-the-minute reports covering the greater Merrimack Valley and... It's WHAV for accurate weather when you want it. Community Spotlight. Get ready to run off all those pre-Christmas cookies at Atkinson's Jingle Ball Half Marathon and 5K. Runners and walkers will gather at Atkinson Resort and Country Club on Sunday, December 9 a.m. for the race kickoff. Everyone is invited to come decked in their holiday finest. Gatorade, hot chocolate, and water will be provided along the route. Entry fees are $70 for the half marathon and $30 for the 5K. All participants gain entry into the after party and proceeds from ticket sales will benefit Girls on the Run New Hampshire. Visit JingleBellHalf.com for more information or to register. Someone you know is on WHAV. To submit or read your own nonprofit announcements, click on the contact tab at WHAV.net or email news at WHAV.net. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Robin Fancher. W-H-A-P Open Mic! From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, W-H-A-V presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. With about eight or nine minutes left to go on this edition of the Open Mic Show, I want to do my, my thanks to Cindy Driver and Chris Porter. The Chris is uh, DJ Chris, the man with five radio jobs, all of them unpaid. And that's the state of the business these days. But no, uh, he finds it personally rewarding, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to do the drawing now. This is the famous Jack Bevilacqua hat left behind in the studio when he took his leave of absence. I don't know how many years ago now. <laughs> but, Jack, uh, if you're listening, thank you. All right, I'm, I'm uh, shuffling up. You guys have been very good tonight. Lots of entries here. Uh, let's see who the lucky person is going to be. Let's, uh, let's draw this one. All right, the winner is... 
Irene, I believe Irene of Groveland is the winner. Uh, I don't remember now who called that one in. Uh, Irene. Uh, so we've got that. So we're going to mark that. Is the winner for December. All right. Okay, and I think we, we still have callers on hold. So let's go right now to oh, the, the caller hung up. Was that on my, that was on my end? Any more on your end? All right, caller, if you wouldn't mind, you want to, we just have a little bit of time if you want to call back. I don't know exactly what happened there. So give us a call back. It's here 823 on the Open Mic Show. Well, uh, and unless we get another call, you know, it's a good time to talk about the elections. Now, a lot of us have spent some time wondering uh, what the voters' intent was. And maybe you can't. Maybe, you know, it's just too random to know. But uh, the voters uh, moved up. Tom Sullivan moved up. Uh, Joe Bevilacqua and uh, Sullivan and Bevilacqua were among those who uh, wanted to hold the line on uh, the city budget. Now, where are the voters them? It's hard to know. Um, Councilor, Council President John Mitchison, again, the top vote getter. Uh, voters seem to be rewarding him, and he voted against the budget uh, every every chance he could. And in fact, he was not one of those. He was the only one who actually voted against it during the final vote. So it's hard to discern what voters' intent was if we can collectively think there was an intent. Uh, were they rewarding those who wanted to hold back spending? Were they rewarding those who wanted to spend more on public safety, on education? economic development, as John Mitchison and, and others uh, wanted to do? Or is it just the luck of the draw? You know, uh, some, someone, several people have suggested that simply the ballot order uh, was enough uh, for some people. If you, uh, if you were highly ranked on the ballot, Tom Sullivan was number one on the ballot, uh, Colin LePage was number two, and so on, that some people just check off the first nine they recognize, and some of the others were below that number. So that maybe that's the explanation. Do you have a thought on that? We have about five minutes. 978-374. 1900. Just interesting sometimes to look at this. I think voters are very intelligent, and I think they, they cast their ballots for a reason. And so it's always interesting to look at these results and see if we can't figure out uh, something. In some cases, I've noticed over the years that uh, some of the councilors that didn't do as well uh, the voters were not intending to punish them. In fact, the voters just assumed, oh, well, so-and-so is going to get in, so I'm going to use my votes on this other person. And so in some cases, it doesn't mean the voters didn't like them or they weren't as favorable. And, you know, even in the last few, you know, the 8th, 11th position, um, those are so close that just a family member uh, – you know, canceling out another family member might change the result in those cases. But uh, of the changes, we're going to have a uh, new uh, city councilor, Tom, uh, Tim Jordan, one uh, the only new newcomer. And when Andy Vargas steps down, because he is being sworn in Wednesday, heard only on WHAV News, uh, Andy Vargas is going to leave the council at the end of the year. Uh, and there's a lot of reasons for uh, him waiting to the end of the year. One, it's before his second term would have begun. Uh, and also because it would create kind of chaos if he were to resign earlier than that, because then there would be calls for filling the seat. Uh, so certainly a complicated uh, formula all around. Let's, uh, let's take uh, this last call. You are on the open mic show. You're on the open mic. Hi, good evening again. Oh, good evening. I'm, I was just calling back to say that my mom won the cake, and um, I, we're from Groveland. Oh, okay, that's your mother. Yes. Well, happy birthday. Irene, right? Yes. Well, wonderful. So we're going to be putting those in the mail probably probably the end of the week or the beginning of the week. Oh, all right. Uh, have you won before? A uh, long time ago. Oh, all right. So you know the deal. You get a letter from WHAV. Then you call Albi D's Second Generation Italian Bakery. Tell them whether you want vanilla or chocolate. Yeah. And then you arrange a time to pick it up, and you just present the letter as your proof of winning. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm, I'm glad you won. Thank you so much, and uh, happy birthday to your mother. Is she listening now or no? Uh, she's 
she's sleeping right now. Oh, well, then you make sure. Hey, you know, by the way, that this show will be available at whav.net uh, sometime tomorrow, so you can play it back for her. Oh, great. Yeah, so it's all there. So and congratulations. Okay, and thank you so much, and you have a nice evening. You too. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Uh, Bye-bye. Uh, another happy award winner here at WHAV. All right. Well, uh, parting thoughts then. Uh, do, do the election results mean anything? Uh, hard to know. But we're, we're going to have a new representative very quickly this week, in fact. Andy Vargas will be sworn in. Be, and that's because uh, he's filling in the unexpired term of Representative Brian Dempsey. And if this was any other year, he'd wait till January like everybody else. But the seat is empty. And, and you know, the powers that be uh, agree we need all the representation we can get here in Haverhill. Uh, Andy Vargas has, uh, you know, has a whatever the cliche is, big shoes to fill. Brian Dempsey, you know, after 27 years in the legislature, was able to bring home the bacon for Haverhill. And um, almost anybody, uh, that would be a difficult job. You start uh, with very low seniority. Uh, others have their own agendas, and you have to have to work your way up. However, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that... Um, Representative Vargas, uh, with all of the endorsements he received, uh, might have up uh, in the legislature. I mean, after all, he was endorsed by uh, the Speaker of the House. He was endorsed by the, the new chairman of Ways and Means. Now, let's see how that plays out during the next year. It's certainly a year that, uh, that city government leaders are a little bit concerned about because uh, sometimes the numbers aren't going in the right direction with all the, you know, health care keeps going up, uh, the city needs keep going up, uh, we've got to pay uh, raises uh, to, uh, to uh, s some, uh, some union members that have gone without raises for years, as it turns out. So it'll be an interesting year. To stay tuned for that. It's uh, we're just about out of time, so let's call it a night. Uh, thank you for joining us here on the Open Mic Show. We're going to take a few weeks off for the rebuild and then some Big, exciting things happening, so stay tuned for those. Good night. Open mic! Join Tim Coco live on the open mic again next Monday night at 6.30. The opinions expressed on the open mic show are not necessarily those of WHAV, its underwriters, or affiliated stations. The open mic show came to you from the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom.